famous rupture, and we're going to briefly touch on fractal geometry. And probably one of the most famous fractals that we have is the Sierpinski's triangle. Okay, and so I've chosen a Sierpinski's triangle here. I've made B be the point 2, 2 root 3, and 4, 0, just to have a starting point of some kind. And so this is our initial triangle. And the first iteration of Sierpinski's triangle is generated from triangle OBD, so OBD, using affine iterative function systems, meaning I do the same transformation, the transformation over and over and over and over again. And what happens is F1, it takes the whole big triangle and it maps it onto the little triangle here, down here. And so to do it, it shrinks it down. F2 is a transformation OB, the big triangle, to the green triangle here. So it shrinks down the big triangle to the blue triangle, and then it shifts it over to the green triangle's position. And finally, the last one goes to the red triangle here. So it shrinks down, and then it shifts over and up to the red position. And so those, that's what's going on. And then they take this triangle and do it again. Let's take a look at a couple iterations. So here's the first scenario. And if I do one iteration, it shrinks it down, shrinks it down and shifts it, shrinks it down, and shifts it up and over. If I do the next one, it's going to start. This is the base function triangle is going to start with now. Starts with it, shrinks it down, shrinks it down and shifts it over, shrinks the base one and shifts it over and up. And here's the next one. Again, it starts that base triangle. Then each iteration, it's going to now, the next one's going to start with this particular triangle. Shrink it down. Shift it. Shrinks it down and shifts it. And the last one takes it again. Shift down. And it, these fractals can go on infinitely so. And so that's the idea of a fractal. Okay, It continues the pattern over and over and over again through this iterative process. So I want to describe into words the transformation of OBD is going to OAE. Well, in order to do that, basically what's happening is I'm shrinking it down half the by the two is coming to one. So it is shrinking, shrinking. Oh, that's poor spelling. Shrinking by one half. Kind of like an enlargement, but smaller. Then OAE, once I'm down here, to go to OCD, it's going to move over here. So that one then is going to go, it's going to shift 2 to the right. And then finally, the last one takes this triangle here, shrinks it down, OA here, so I go, OBD, to, so OAE then shifts it up and over, goes well, and I look at the symmetries, this is 1, so this point will go over 1 and up to here, which is root 3, and so it is going to shift in the x direction 1 and in the y direction 3, so I go over 1, up 3, and this is where the new triangle will be. So now if I want to come along and define F1, which is the first affine transformation. F1 is equal to the big triangle becoming this one. And so that simply, I get, it shrinks it by one half. This is going to be F1. F2, well again, it shrinks it down and then it shifts it over. So it's shrink x, y, and then it moves over by this vector to 0. And then finally, f3 will shrink it down. And then it shifts it up and over 1 and root 3. So this is. If, it, if I go through this process of these three transformations continually, it will produce my Sierpinski's triangle. Okay, so here's the second iteration. And we'll notice that if I take this scenario, shrink it down, I get this one. And, if, and that will be the blue triangle. 
if I shrink it down again by a factor of half and then shift it over to zero, I'll get the green one. And then if I shrink it down by a half, which is this matrix, my point x, y, and then I take it and I shift it over to the right one and up root three, that will get me the orange one. And this is exactly f3. So each transformation is exactly the same each time. That's the second iteration. Okay, so now we want to show that the original area of the triangle, OBD, is 4 root 3. Well, here's my triangle. If I want to find the area, I'm going to find the base, which happily is 4. Area is equal to half times the base, which is 4, times the height. Well, I have to remember this is an equilateral triangle, and so this is 60 degrees. This distance is 2 because it's in the midpoint. So if I want to find this value, I can go tangent of 60. I could say tangent 60 is equal to my x over 2. And if I do this arithmetic, I get 2 tan 60. Again, I know tan 60 off the top of my head is square root 3. So this is 2 root 3. And so this is 2 square root 3. And so my area is 4 root 3. So there is the original area. The next problem then says when n is 1, the first iteration, show that the area is 3 root 3. Well, making sure we know what the first iteration means, this is the first iteration. And so I'm looking for the area of the shaded region is what it means. So if I take my first iteration, I want the area of the shaded part. Well, if the whole part is one, the shaded is going to be three quarters because there's four equal triangles, there's three quarters of it. So then it's going to be my original area times three quarters, which I can see here is three root three. The next thing I want to consider, find the area for N2. Well, we're going to do this, we're going to shrink it down again. If we're going to shrink it down again to this scenario, each of these triangles is a quarter, three quarters of what it was. And so, I can take my area that I have, 3 root 3, which is the area of this one, and I'm going to multiply it by 3 quarters, which will give me 9 over 4 root 3. The 7 now says find the formula for the area of the nth iteration. Well, if 4 root 3 is the first one, the original one. Here is the first iteration. I multiply by 3 quarters again for the next iteration, so each iteration will be to the power of n. And so finally, eight, number, question 8 says, com the complete triangle of the object when n goes to infinity, so n is going to infinity, explain why the area, the triangle has no area. Well, if this is my area, I know that as n goes to infinity, well, then 3 to the power n will go, if this gets really, 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 really big, this goes to 0. So as n goes to infinity, this is 4 root 3 times 0, which is 0. And so the area of the Sierpinski's triangle, when you do an infinite iterations, is actually equal to zero. With fractals, fractals have a scenario of what we call self-similar. As you can see, each portion of the triangle is similar to what's inside, and that's a, one of those characteristics. And there's lots of different fractals that exist. We sometimes look at the perimeter of fractions or fractals. Sometimes we look at the area. Um, but this idea of self-similarity is a key feature of practice.